Zug CEO Aisha Evans. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. What is that? <laughs> this is our purpose-built uh, vehicle, driving by the way, uh, for a dense urban environment and uh, basically uh, it is uh, our version of uh, moving around cities um, in a clean, uh, safe and uh, enjoyable way for everyone. If I'm a consumer, I've heard a lot about self-driving vehicles, autonomous vehicles over the last several years. How is this actually going to work in practice? How am I able to get into this vehicle when you come to release it? It's the same way you do today uh, with Mobility On Demand. We have an app and uh, you'll download the app and uh, you'll say, I want to go from point A to point B and uh, request a ride, wait a little bit of, you know, maybe a minute or two and the vehicle will arrive, uh, pull up and uh, the doors will open. You'll slide in, buckle up and uh, charge your phone if you'd like, uh, set your drink if uh, you have one, uh, hit start and uh, off she goes and she'll take you wherever you said you wanted to go and in the meantime you can play some music, adjust your temperature or um, essentially just watch the progress of the route. How many people can fit inside the vehicle? Four is the capacity but we understand that it's a customer choice. Uh, we will offer the possibility of riding alone or riding with three other people uh, or ride sharing, the pandemic notwithstanding. It's a sophisticated looking machine, lots of important consideration around the cost. What's the business model for Zooks with this? Because I imagine that it's expensive to build. <laughs> well, uh, expensive is always a relative term, but let's put it this way. Uh, this is really, really important because it is part really of our mission and our thesis around uh, moving around cities. We will, we will own the fleet and you, the customer, will only pay for a ride. And what's great from an efficiency standpoint, with cars today, with personal cars, really they are used 4% of the time. And 96% of the time, they are depreciating and using space, parking in cities. So in this case, you pay for the ride, and when your ride, before your ride is even over, we'll know the next customer to pick up. So she'll constantly be running, and really be still only to go charge, and then get back on the road. Have you thought about how you'll charge customers? Will it be a sort of flat fare, per trip? Will it be done by mile? Will it be equivalent to the ride hailing services that are out there today? We've thought about it a lot. Uh, um, we, we don't want to disclose any details because things may change, as you know, who would have thought what's going on right now with the pandemic. Uh, what we'll tell you is that it will be affordable. We want this to be very accessible to folks and there will be several ways and several plans to enjoy the service. The other big piece of news this year was that Zooks was acquired by Amazon. Yeah. What does that mean for Zooks, having Amazon as a, a parent company, essentially? First of all, it's a great company. It's a great partner. Uh, it's an honor to be, uh, to be chosen by, uh, by them. That means that uh, not only do we have the capital required, we have the long-term vision, the ability to focus and execute. And this is really about uh, reimagining transportation, really. And so uh, it gives us a baseline to build from and then expand on. Reimagining transportation, does, does that mean that you could work with Amazon down the line in terms of making their delivery fleets autonomous, for example, something like that, non-passenger type services? Potentially, as you see with this vehicle and how modular it is, uh, first, we're going to move people around. That's where the demand is. That's uh, the greatest benefit for society, the cities and everybody involved, meaning the customers too. But yes, I will admit that if we can move people, especially with this footprint, uh, at some point uh, we could move packages, yes. How long is it going to take for me to be able to actually experience this in the real world? When do you think you'll deploy a commercial service here in the United States? So we're not making any announcements on timing, uh, but I know this is a very favorite question. So what we're focused on is testing on private roads and on public roads, making sure that the service is safe and delivers to its promise. So I'll make you a deal. It's not as long as is speculated in some, uh, some press or in some circles, but it's not next year either. Which kinds of environments do you think that you'll launch the service in first? So, dense urban environment is our footprint, uh, but we've been public about the fact that uh, Las Vegas and San Francisco are two initial targets, and obviously this is also why you see our L3 testing fleet in those cities currently. There's a lot of intense interest around the future of mobility, from particularly in the public markets. 
EV startups, LIDAR startups, many of them listing, some via SPAC. What do you see on the, on the business side, the path being for Zooks? Will it remain a part of Amazon? Do you think that you one day could be spun off and go public? You know, it, it's an interesting question because it's a nascent technology and not yet deployed. But in 10 years time, we could see Zooks operating services in cities all across the world. At this point in time, we're proud to be a part of Amazon, a global company. Uh, never say never about what the future holds, but uh, the privilege we have right now is to focus on solving this and delivering it to customers, and that's really where we're. What's the biggest bar to deployment right now? What's the biggest challenge that you're having to overcome now that you've designed and started to build this vehicle? Uh, I would say completing uh, the technology with an eye on safety. Uh, we really, safety is one of our most important parameters and uh, I've been public in saying that until I'm willing to put my 15 year old and my 13 year old in the vehicle by themselves to go to, I don't know, piano lesson or guitar lesson and so that's, achieving that is really where we're focused on and doing it in a quantifiable way. Do you see a world in which in the next few years regulators will be accommodative this is one of those technologies where there's an advantage for everybody. There's an advantage for cities, there's an advantage in terms of in transportation infrastructure. We're working very closely with both city level, state and federal level, and uh, we, 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 we are putting things together. Now, are there laws and things like that? Not yet, but as you can see already in Nevada and in, um, in, uh, in California, driverless permits are being uh, dispersed, basically. There are other jurisdictions as well that are looking closely at autonomous vehicles, China being an example, some European nations. Could we see Zooks establish itself outside of the United States? Yes, yeah, step by step. Uh, starting in the United States, but yes, we have global ambitions. Do you think that the public want this kind of service? Do you think the public will be receptive to getting in a vehicle like that? It has no steering wheel, it has no pedals. You know, where is the momentum going to come from for you guys to deploy beyond what you're able to do yourselves and regulators? I think, um, again, it's safe, it's clean, it's enjoyable, building trust even in uh, the way we architected the vehicle so that there's a contract with customers, they see what we're using to drive, i.e. the sensor pod and compute. And so it will take time, little by little, we'll earn it, uh, we'll demonstrate our safety in a quantifiable way, but uh, we, think, we, think, we think it's an inviting way to basically liberate customers to not worry about driving, parking, and all of those things, and just be transported. And what they do during that uh, time that's liberated, it's also up to them in terms of entertainment, music, productivity. Finally, I wanted to ask you about car ownership. I guess, is it Zooks's ambition, hope that a vehicle like this and the service that you hope to bring to market ends car ownership? Do you see a world in which people just don't own cars? Not in the foreseeable future. Uh, I think we think it'll be a mix, but what we will see in dense urban environment, this vehicle is really built for cities and uh, it's really about efficiency. It's about uh, overall societal benefit and we think it will be a mix for a long time. Okay. Aisha Evans, Zook CEO, thank you very much for showing us the vehicle and for having us. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it.